I think I'm kind of a riddle from the standpoint that guys that play this long, this long usually aren't averaging 30 points for a month or getting 50 point games, especially off the bench. Like that's kind of unheard of. So I think I kind of fall in the category of like, what do we do with them? In the 2000 NBA draft, the Cleveland Cavaliers select Jamal Crawford from the University of Michigan. I don't know if you got this. Yeah, this course my seven years. But what's crazy about it, like for real, is the fact that I really used to come here all the time. 15, 16, come out here, sun was going down. You know what I mean? Like it'd be packed, people everywhere. I look at it like a rapper, you know, like before the album comes, it's the mixtape, everybody creates the buzz. At that time, before I played high school, those were my mixtapes. I was in every gym. Just like, I guess, rappers, they go from different clubs or different parties, they open up for different people. Like, I was at every gym, every court. If there was a hoop, I was there. And then the people just start coming. And the buzz grew, the buzz grew. So by the time I was in high school, they already knew. That was over 20 years ago, you know what I mean? Like, it's crazy how fast it goes. Straight from mixtape. Came to high school, obviously you guys see my name on the court right here. We will actually go in the school. So it'll bring back some memories for sure. Hey, how you doing? Hey, Mr. Epstein. Um <laughs> Tell him. Tell the truth. Uh, Jamal had a hard time getting the class, but there was no more genuine human being. That's true. And, That's uh, true. <laughs> and fortunately, some of us got enough common sense that uh, we're able to study on our own when institutions don't work for us. <laughs> That's Jamal. I appreciate it. Thank you. You know, this really All right. Thank you, guys. Come on. Nice. Nice. First year. So, little known fact, high school, never, ever, ever lost a game here, playing high school. The greatest shows are right here. You've had everybody from Gary Payton, Sean Kemp, all the Sonics come in here and watch, participate. There's my jersey right there. You can see Nate Robinson, Terrence Williams. To this day, even being in the NBA, playing college, playing all that, playing here in high school is the most fun I ever had playing basketball to this day. It was so pure, it was so like, you were able to dream, you were dreaming about everything, dreaming about what could happen in the future. Now that you're actually living that, you're like, oh, okay, it's great and this is how it worked out, but high school is the most fun I ever had playing basketball. You were just so free. People don't know I used to be able to dunk. Like I was jumping in the air, like catching lobs, but the best lob I ever threw came from him. Nate Robinson, as you guys see, Nate the Great, he was a freshman, I'm a senior. It was an out of bounds play, we're over on that side of the court. I didn't know Nate was gonna throw it, I should've known he was crazy then because I wasn't known for jumping. <laughs> he kinda throws it behind me, exactly. I, he threw it behind me a little bit, I caught it back here, I dunked it. You know I played cool, so I ran off like it was cool, but I'm saying to myself, oh, I ain't never doing that again. <laughs> so it was really, everybody really cool. Everybody was crazy, I remember that. Yeah, yeah everybody I was, was like crazy. one of the dopest fans. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, pretty cool, man. Coming from the same same city, same place, same, same area, everything. same high school. Yeah. We were the first teammates and uh, friends to ever do that, to be able to same same high school, playing the same NBA team. Nate Robinson, Jamal Crawford. Yes, sir. Rainier Beach High School, Beach Boys. Like, Always. This is another mall who he's to do. Yeah. <laughs> So our library when I was here was way smaller. It was like, it's pretty much just this section. And I remember watching like Allen Iverson uh, clips on NBA.com, it took like 10 minutes to load a five second clip. So it's dope that they have all internet access right now. Like they could watch anything right now. 
We got you. We got you. If I never play another minute in the NBA, I've had one of the 10 longest careers in NBA history. Like, if you'd ask me if I was a kid just to play in the NBA, right? But having a long career is like 10 years. That's a long career. I've almost had two long careers in one. I think I'm kind of a riddle from the standpoint that guys that play this long, this long usually aren't averaging 30 points for a month or getting 50 point games, especially off the bench. Like that's kind of unheard of. So I think I kind of fall in the category of like, what do we do with them, right? So in my heart of hearts, I'm like, I know I'm still the same player. I know at this age, you're not supposed to be the same player, but I know I am. That's why that last month was so huge. Besides the 51 point game off the bench, right? I averaged 31 points in the month of April. That's my highest score month of my career. In 19 years, in Nick days, Clipper days, wherever, right? So that we see many, like I, it confirmed what I already knew. So, and here we are. Young Maul, right there. Got my Bulls jersey, had my S. Dot Carters on. I remember I first put those on. I played against uh, Allen Iverson in my first game. And he was like, man, you can wear those? Like those are, he thought they were just like some casual shoes. But yeah, I'm probably one of the only few people that have been in a commercial with Jay-Z and Michael Jordan. Jay-Z with that shoe. And then Michael Jordan, when I played the young him when he was coming back, uh, young 23 versus old 23, when he was coming back to the Wizards. So that's pretty cool as well. I look at my career kind of like, albums, right? Like everybody has their favorite version or their favorite album. So Chicago, like that was my introduction to the NBA. Like I was really, really like, wow, this is the NBA. And then when I come to the Knicks, I'm like, wow, like I feel like I was a really a young adult. So then when I leave New York and I go to Golden State, that was like a slept on album, right? Because I averaged 20 points, I averaged five assists, I had 50, I had 40 my first home game. Like it was, but we weren't that good. Then I go to Atlanta and it's a whole new chapter. Now it's like going to a group and you're like, okay, you were the lead guy, now you're in a group. Now you come off the bench, right? So now it's like, okay, you're not gonna be Denzel, you're gonna have to be T.I. in American Gangster. How you gonna, you know, do your part? So now that goes and I go to Portland. And that was like the album where you have all your fans like, what album is this? Like, what's going on here? This ain't the Jamal we grew to love. So I said, all right, that's all right. You guys didn't like uh, Kingdom Come? Here, I come back with something else, right? So then I came back with a whole new album with the Clippers. And that was like a lot of people's favorite album. It's funny because a lot of my highlights, people go to the Clippers. I'm like, no, I had a highlights way before then. But that was the best team I was on. Right, and then Minnesota was a challenge. I don't know what album that would be for Jay, but that was a challenge. And then Phoenix was an even bigger challenge in a different way. But I still found a way to kind of rise above it because now at that point, I'm fighting the age thing, right? It's, oh, he's too old. So this is where our trophies are, a lot of trophies right here. Basketball, football, track, rich history. My first real job wasn't an NBA player. It was actually working in the arena. And I was the guy who would actually bring food up from the basement to the concession stand. And it, it's normally a 10 minute trip, right? I would make it a 45 minute trip because I would stand the hallways and watch Sonics play. I was able to look on that court and dream. I was able to look out there and fantasize and, and dream about that. And with us not having the Sonics right now, I thought it was our duty to kind of give back and be the Sonics for the generation coming up. So we're, we're heavily involved. Still make your teammates better. Still try to implement what we've been working on for the last hour and a half. And I just did it for a, you know, a lot of people in my community, a lot of people in the state. You didn't have to reach a certain status and not turn around and pull somebody back up. You're like, I made it, you guys can make it too, come on. So I think that's what's cool about it. Now my dreams aren't so much on me, to be honest. Like it's more for my kids. It's about their dreams and that's what I dream about is making sure their dreams are fulfilled. Nip said that actually greatest human act is to inspire. It's inspiration.
even like in my early days, I didn't like take them for granted. Like I would be in awe, like, man, I just talked to Scottie Pippen. I just met Rasheed Wallace, because these are like, I collected basketball cards. I could tell you about any basketball player, what number they wore, anything. So like, even then I was thankful and I was like, wow, I'm really on the court with these guys. But now even more so because the end is closer than the beginning, you know, so you're able to really reflect and you're like, wow, like, when I retire, whenever that is, when I'm just home sitting around, I, like, man, I had a commercial with Jay-Z, I had a commercial with Michael Jordan. Like Michael Jordan gave me his shoes that he wore against the Bulls for the first time, he signed them for me. I, I have Michael Jordan's first and last shoes he ever played in and wore against the Bulls, he signed them for me. But like all these crazy stories, like I think about them a lot more, but when you're in the moment, you just go up, just feel like that was cool. But yeah, I'll think about them later. If you were to drop one last album, what would that album be like? I mean, it would be the fun album. Huh? It would be the funnest album I've ever made. Because you know time is limited, right? So you don't have the, the luxury of saying, okay, if I don't do my all on this album, I got two more albums coming out. Like, it would be the funnest album I've ever made, for sure. Take it back to the mixtape. It'd be mixtape era, bro. Cut. Cut. That's the guy.